Welcome to Drone News Now. Welcome to Drone U HQ. My name is Paul, and I have some great news here at Drone U. We have expanded our drone training operations to the Southern Gulf of America coast, and also Miami, amongst other cities, as we train six new instructors here at Drone U to expand our industry-leading training and system of exercises to treat your, your brain like machine learning and give you the skills to pay the bills to fly in any environment close low, safely, and smoothly, as after all. But in our first piece of news this week, it seems like the FAA has actually done something cool. Gamers rejoice as United Airlines has been approved to have Starlink in all of their domestic flights, which should greatly increase the capability of internet on planes. I don't know about you, but I've been flying Southwest a lot lately, and even the movies that you can get behind Southwest's paywall never seem to load properly on the 700 series aircraft. I've always wondered why. Well, now with United, which I recently switched over to, uh, you can get internet so good that you can stream and even game. That's why gamers rejoice, and you'll probably be seeing them at lines around airports going from Southwest and Frontier over to United. Long story short is uh, we got new internet in the skies, and it's about time. In our next piece of news, Mana drones out of Ireland taking shots at the entire drone delivery business as they say that they have got the only profitable drone delivery system in the entire world. Mana's delivery systems offers unique methods for carrying out drone deliveries, making them a standout in the industry. Taking flight in Ireland and Finland, they offer a unique opportunity for drone delivery that we haven't seen to date. Look at the aircraft, they're quite, they're quite unique. They're very cool. It makes you wonder how they became so profitable so quickly. It is amazing what you can do in an environment where regulations empower innovation. In another piece of drone news, China is really living in the future as Ehang, ticker EH, has won approval for commercial flights. But because of the very short endurance on the batteries of these aircraft, they're only doing sightseeing tours around Chinese cities. Very interesting though, they are the first in aviation history to offer commercial flights on unmanned aircraft. And it is true, the aircraft are not being flown by anyone. They're fully autonomous. You just have people riding in them. So now you can no longer blame a pilot for pilot error. It will be computer error if there is an issue. Speaking of issues, it looks like Reagan National Airport is in the spotlight once again as airplanes were receiving collision alerts of, on approach to the DC Metropolitan Airport. That's right, as airplanes were flying in for takeoff and landing, they were getting collision avoidance alerts on the dashboard. The TCAS system is used so that planes can essentially maneuver their flights to avoid a collision. The cause of this was actually a counter drone system, which is interesting timing because there is a bill in Congress right now that would allow state and local governments to operate counter drone technology around you know, events, major airports, things like that. Traditionally, this authorization has only been uh, gifted to federal authorities, which seems might even be problematic as a counter drone system created these collision alerts, sending pilots over the moon. Just too bad they didn't have a little crypto with them. All right. 51 Drones deserves another award for the best video in accuracy and precision because he said it's the dumbest drone law on the planet. Well, Connecticut's drone restrictions have been sparking debate over U.S. airspace sovereignty as Connecticut regulators have overlooked key U.S. Code 49 U.S.C. 40103, which grants sole authority over the airspace to, that's right, the FAA. So these new restrictions and regulations have zero legal authority whatsoever. And while regulators play lawfare games of sue me to prove me I'm wrong, well, guess what? We're gonna keep taking flight because at the FAA, we have this great rule that says we can avoid any regulations in the event to avoid an emergency. That doesn't apply to state regulations, but that being said, in the United States, you can protest, protest any unjust laws. Don't quote me on that legalese. That being said, Connecticut is now the absolute worst environment for innovation, technology, flying robots, and anything that actually helps get things done faster and more efficiently. Things like search and rescue, things like progression reports, BDC for construction sites, engineering, architecture, and so much more. 
So if you are in the Connecticut state and you have got some great comments and questions on this, please comment below. Now in our next piece of news, it seems like the FAA has changed a key provision for public safety operating under the FAA's guidance. Previously, if DFR or drones as a first responder wanted authorization from the FAA to operate, they would have to file a certificate of authorization. It's a cumbersome and complex system that the FAA figured out while people were applying. Now that they've figured out this system, it's now a certificate of waiver, offering a simple questionnaire about how the operations are going to go. Um, Charles Warner from Drone Responders, um, he states that there were two key provisions that needed to happen to remove challenges for DFR to truly succeed, stating that they, need, they needed to remove human visual observers from rooftops and the time-consuming approval process for new technology. What's really interesting about this, and should be its own separate news story, we'll call it the Whiskey Tango Foxtrot of the Week, but the Whiskey Tango Foxtrot of the Week is that the new rule for these operations below 200 feet states that ADSB technology compliance is sufficient in controlled airspace. ADSB, wait a minute. This is potentially raising questions about the relevance of remote ID. So I've already had a huge spat on Twitter, AKA X, with former drone laws attorney, Brendan Shulman, because he and I were at the W Hotel with the FAA in 2017, talking about how drones could never have ADSB Otherwise, they would black out the map, meaning there would be so many aircraft on the ADSB map, you wouldn't be able to discern commercial from drone, et cetera, et cetera. Interestingly enough, though, he said, well, did they clarify ADSB in or ADSB out? Because the FAA was very clear that they do not want ADSB out. So it remains unclear, but this could be really pivotal, pivotal information about better understanding remote ID and how the FAA wants drones to interact with existing aircraft. In our last piece of drone news, and I call this drone news that's good, is that a new domestic manufacturer has risen to the top. Check out Poseidon. Poseidon creates fixed wing, fixed wing drones for special operations over water. What, uh, the new Poseidon Seagull drones offers a fixed wing design, specifically obviously operated over water, so it can land on the water as well. And it caters to industries like maritime surveillance, search and rescue, environmental monitoring, and so much more. It's really cool though to see that this company has gone um, from nothing to manufacturing a drone in six months with pre-seed startup capital. It's interesting, we are now starting to see the maturing of drone manufacturing. Makes you wonder who is going to create the next M4E of American and domestic drones. I would argue that secretly there are three companies trying to build it right now, and I'm excited for all of them. So that's it for our drone news this week. If you're looking for the absolute best in-person or online training, check out The Drone U because we teach from experience, operating in numerous environments in close proximity to high asset, um, high value assets, and we can teach you the habits, system, and routines that no one else can. Why? Because we actually teach from experience. Check out thedroneu.com, and I'll see you next time. Drone News Now crazy that landed almost perfectly. Anyway, we'll see you next time.